guys. So one way that I stay really organized is by using a life binder, which is my adult version of the agenda that I used to keep when I was in school. And this kind of has everything in my entire life very organized in one place where I feel like I'm very on top of it with every aspect of my life. So I have things like my actual agenda, my posting calendar for my YouTube channel, and my blog. One thing that it has that is kind of one of my favorite parts of it is I keep a lot of lists in here. I'm a big list maker. It kind of helps me keep everything organized. I'm a big like pen and paper person. I don't like keeping things in my mind or on the computer. I like actually writing it down on a piece of paper with a pen. I feel like it kind of organizes my thoughts in a way that I can't do any other way. So I was creating some lists that can be kind of like some of my go-to list for my binder. And one that I made today is called Wardrobe Essentials. And these are the items that I feel like I always need to have current, well-fitting versions of every single thing on this list in my wardrobe at all times. So this list in and of itself would not make for a very interesting wardrobe. These are just like the basics that sometimes you can forget to buy because it's not the fun stuff. I feel like if I have every single thing on this list, then I can create lots of outfits by using accessories and more colorful, trendier pieces from each season. When I was younger, I actually didn't have a lot of these basics because my mom would take me shopping twice a year. I would always have an allotted budget that I was allowed to spend, and it was never a lot. It was enough for a few you know, new pieces of clothing each time. And of course I was growing because I was younger, so I wasn't really accumulating maybe what I had worn the, the summer before for the next summer because I had outgrown it. I didn't have a lot of money to spend, so I didn't want to spend it on the boring basic stuff. I wanted to buy like the bright, fun things that then weren't really in trend the next year. And it didn't really matter because I was outgrowing things every season anyway. But freshman year of high school came around, I was like 14 years old, and I became the size that I am today. I have stayed that weight throughout my entire life. I'm 23 now, so almost a decade, except junior year of college where I gained weight and then lost it again. So I kind of did like the freshman 15 in college, but I did it junior year. I didn't gain weight freshman year. It was just junior year was like the one time in my life that I gained weight and then lost it. So other than that though, all of my clothes since I was 14 have kind of been accumulating. And obviously I've gotten rid of things that are just like, they don't fit well anymore just because they've been stretched out or they've gotten old or whatever. But I feel like once you get to that point where you've stopped outgrowing things every year, that's when you can really make sure that you have every single thing on this checklist. So I'm just going to go through the checklist with you. This is just mine. This is based on my own experience, what I always need and what I feel like the majority of people would need in their wardrobe. You might think that this is the most basic stuff and you might be like, I have every single one of those things. I'm going to tell you my list anyway. For tops, I think everyone needs a black and a white cami for layering. I like the ones from Express because they're normally on a sale and they have a built-in bra and I need that because I'm larger chested and so um, I need the extra support. So I always have lots of colors of camis, but you especially need like a fresh black one and a fresh white one um, that's like relatively new because those actually can tend to look old with just washing them too much more so than some other things. I think that those kind of get like older looking faster. Then you need a white and a black v-neck t-shirt. I'm wearing an orange v-neck t-shirt today from Victoria's Secret. It's just their like basic v-neck that comes in every single solid color. They were on a sale two for $28 the other day. So they're, you know, more expensive than you can probably go to Target and get them for like $5. But um, it really doesn't matter because they're just layering. But you want it to be fitted but not super tight. You want it to be kind of like a casual look because that you can layer with lots of different things. And if you have just like a plain white v-neck, you can put like a colorful scarf with it or chunky bracelets. You can accessorize it and make it look really great. And then you need one dressy blouse. Um, I just put this because I really like these for when I'm kind of dressing up but still casual if that makes sense. Like I always pair it with skinny jeans and heels and it gives a really put together look. I just got one from Zara that's green with some gold metallic details that I really really love. So those would be my must-have tops. For jackets I would say you need two must-have jackets for me. 
I think that a longer black jacket, kind of a trench but more well fitting. I have one from Express that I love. It's really tight. It's kind of like a pea coat on the top and then it kind of flares out at your waist and just kind of accentuates or it flares out at your hips and it ties around your waist and it just gives you the most beautiful hourglass effect. But any like black pea coat or trench coat that comes below your hips I think is good because you can dress that up or dress it down. So it's better than a shorter crop jacket. And then the second jacket that I think everyone needs is a neutral colored blazer. So it can be any color you want. You can have a black one or a nude one or a navy one or go all out and get hot pink, but that's not really at that point an essential anymore. That's more fun. I just got a hot pink blazer that I love. It's from Elizabeth and James and I think it's so cute, but it's definitely not what I would consider an essential. Um, I think nude blazers with skinny jeans and heels is so cute. So I would definitely recommend a nude one, but the black blazer is like a tried and true. You can dress it up. You can make it casual. Blazers are great because they used to be you know, thought of as really super dressy, but now they can look so casual when you roll the sleeves up and stuff. I only have two essential bottoms on my list. I put black leggings, and for me I put that because I wear black leggings a lot, and also I feel like leggings are kind of like camis. They get old if you wash them too many times. I think it's because of the material, so I always am looking for like a new pair of black leggings, and they're just the basic. I get the ones that are cropped, um, kind of like mid-calf, and I really like them. They're, you know, they show off your legs. And then my second bottom must have is dark wash skinny jeans. So not everyone likes skinny jeans. If you're not a skinny jean person, just any pair of dark wash jeans, I would say, is kind of a must have. When I was younger, I never picks out dark wash. Like I always got either the light wash or the medium wash. And that might have also been the times I grew up in the 90s and that was all about light wash jeans. Shoes, I would say three pairs of must-haves. I would say black heels and nude heels are kind of a given and it doesn't matter how tall your heel is or if you get pointy toe or round toe or platform or no platform, it doesn't matter as long as you have a black pair and a nude pair. And it doesn't matter what shade of nude. I have one that's more of like a blushy nude and then I have one that's actually more of like a skin toned light nude color. So again, just whatever you like, whatever grabs your eye or whatever you can find for a good deal. Here's an example of a nude heel. I love this one because it has a platform which makes the super big heel actually much easier to walk in because it feels like it's only that tall which is not that bad of a heel. And these are from Guess and I just like it because it's more of a blushy nude. I wouldn't even necessarily consider this a nude. I would think it was more of like a blush pink. But anything in the light tan category I would say fits for like your nude pump. So it doesn't matter if it's this or like a true nude. And then the last pair of like must have shoes that I would say are a pair of flat dressier boots. So by dressier I mean not Ugg boots. Not like furry, chunky. This is what I'm talking about. I have these. These are from Steve Madden and these are actually last year's version but they have these like every single year because I used to get a pair of these every year in college because we lived in these. These are to me the dressy version of the Comfort Uggs. They're super comfortable. They're flat so they're not hard to walk in and these are my go-to. Like I wear these more often than any other shoe pair, probably combined. I just live in these. And this is what they look like. They are just flat leather ruched boots from Steve Madden and I love these. I wear them with skinny jeans and I actually just, you know, wear them over my jeans where my jeans are kind of tucked into them with, you know, any top and like either a black blazer or my black kind of um, pea coat trench coat. It just looks really great and then you can dress it up with your bag or your accessories and you're comfortable. So it looks dressier than like you would look if you were in flip flops or if you were in um, like Ugg boots, but you're still super comfortable. These are like my must have shoes. I'm so in love with them. I also have them in like a um, brown kind of caramel color that's also really pretty. I want to get them in like all the colors. They have a gray too, I think. Okay, for dresses, I think there are two must-have dresses. You need your sexy little black dress. Every girl needs a sexy little black dress. Short, tight, 
appropriate for a date, appropriate for an evening. The great thing about a little black dress is because it's so basic, you can make it look completely different with different accessories. So you can wear it out with your girlfriends one night with like some hot pink heels and a fun bag, and then you can wear it on a date with like black heels or nude heels and make it a little sexier. You can just do so many things with a black dress. The second dress that I think is a must have is a bright conservative dress. And by this, I mean something that would be appropriate to either wear to church or out to breakfast with your grandmother or to meet your in-laws or your boyfriend's parents. You know, something that you would feel was appropriate for the respectful people in your life to see you in. Basically the opposite of your sexy little black dress. So you have both ends of the spectrum covered. For undergarments, I know this is kind of weird to talk about this on video, but I'm going to anyway. You need a strapless bra. It doesn't matter if it's one of those like convertible wear 50 way bras or if it's just a basic strapless. I just have a basic strapless. It's not even, it doesn't even have straps that you can go every which way. I have it in like four colors. I have nude, black, white, and pink. So it doesn't really matter. I would say go for nude if you're just gonna do one. You need a razor back bra. So a bra that's actually designed to be worn as a razorback, not one that you pinch together with one of those bra clasps, which I have by the way, and they're very uncomfortable. And you also, you know, with the convertible strapless bras, you can say, oh, well, I'm gonna get, you know, the 50 way bra from Victoria's Secret and it will work as both a razorback and a um, strapless bra. But for me, honestly, I don't think that bra is that comfortable. I prefer to have one that's actually meant to be a razorback because it's much more supportive and it's more comfortable for your back. I would say I need a regular bra and nude as well because I wear nude bras more than anything else when I'm wearing something that is a little bit more see-through or you know when you can see the color but I also think that like fun bras and like bright colors or lace or whatever rhinestones is also fun so these are again just essentials. For bags I just wrote one thing down black small bag. I do think that this is something that's really important. It doesn't matter if it's a wristlet. This was like my go-to wristlet in college when I would go out I would just take this in my phone with my like ID and some cash and some gum. That's too small for you or if you're not a wristlet girl you can also just do a clutch like this. This was from Coach by the way and this one I think is from Forever 21. No, this is from H&M and it's just like a black clutch that looks like this and it has straps so you can put the straps inside and just carry it as a clutch or carry it over your shoulder so it's kind of versatile. Then I have five extras that are not actual fashion things but to me they're total essentials and I always need to have them on hand. Let's see. Vaseline, which I've talked about in my videos, um, this is a foot saver. If you put some of this on your feet before you wear uncomfortable heels, you will not get blisters, and this is the best. So this container is actually just for my feet. I don't use this for anything else, this actual container, because when I put it on, I'll put my finger in here, put it on my foot, and then put my finger back in here for more for my other foot. So I don't, like, I don't use this for anything else. This is like my, my foot, my designated shoe helper. A little lint roller. I carry this one around in my purse like these little ones. This is from the travel section of Target. Like the little, um, you know, travel sized goodies. But having a lint roller, especially I have a white cat that his fur gets everywhere. Safety pins is another one. Fashion tape is another one that's just double sided sticky tape. And the last one is wrinkle releaser. I also have a little tiny one from Downey that's like a travel size one as well that um, it just works really well if you are in a hurry and you don't have time to iron something but you're about to put something on and it's a little bit wrinkly. Wrinkle releaser works really well. I don't know how it works. It's like a mystery to me how wrinkle releaser works but it does. So that is my wardrobe essentials. It's being tucked away into my life binder. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.